Hello, I'm David Burkhart and welcome to another edition of the UK Theatre Tour, which today comes from the heart of London's West End. Now, out of the nearly 40 official West End theatres, only 15% are run independently. And this theatre I'm currently in is the largest of the independents. We've got a lot to get through in its 113 years of history. It's time to let the sun shine in. Welcome to the Shaftesbury Theatre. The theatre opened on the 26th of December 1911, after a construction period of just five months. It was the last new theatre to be built on Shaftesbury Avenue, and was the first entirely steel-framed theatre in London. Designed by Bertie Crewe, it was originally known as the New Prince's Theatre. It changed its name to the Prince's Theatre in 1914, and then changed to the Shaftesbury in 1963. Among the big stars and productions to be hosted at the theatre in its early years include the George and Ira Gershwin musical Funny Face, which starred Fred and Adela Stare. Its current production is the musical adaptation of the 1993 film Mrs Doubtfire, where you can take a picture with the leading lady herself in the theatre's foyer. The Shaftesbury has recently undergone a major redevelopment, improving the front of house to ensure the theatre's longevity. Whilst maintaining the elegance of the Edwardian building, among its many improvements include a lift installation improving accessibility in the venue, an upgraded air conditioning unit, a new bar and hospitality spaces. The toilet facilities have also doubled to how many would be required in a new built modern arena. The 1911 bar is the newly built bar space under the landscaped Prince's Circus. It serves as the bar space for the stalls and is fully accessible. There's a whole history of the theatre on the walls and look out for the original theatre brickwork. The Crew Bar serves as the bar space for the circle where there are dedications on the wall to Bertie Crew. The Tafner Suite and the Ray Cooney Room are available for VIP and group bookings with prices starting from £40 per person. All the bar spaces as well as the auditorium can be hired out head over to the Shaftesbury website for full details. The Tafner Suite is named after Donald Tafner, a television producer who provided the leadership of the theatre from the early 90s. The Ray Cooney Room is named after the producer and playwright whose company the Theatre of Comedy took ownership of the theatre in the 1980s with a focus on comedy and farces. Over the past 20 years, the Shaftesbury has welcomed countless Tony and Olivier award-winning productions to the West End. I was given a chance to look at some of the programmes from recent productions, before taking a trip through time to see one of the earliest programmes in the theatre's collection, a season of Russian ballet from 1927. For our price comparison, ice creams are provided by Marshfield Farm and cost between £4.50 and £5. Ticket prices for Mrs Doubtfire start from £22.50 to £89.50, with premium seats also available for up to £250. The stage and docking bay doors are located on Grape Street. There are a total of nine different levels to the theatre, Backstage, there are 14 dressing rooms of varying sizes, which includes this multi-occupancy room. There's also a quick-change dressing room close to the stage and a sub-stage changing area. Underneath the stage, there's the orchestra pit, with a separate and soundproof room for the drums. There are numerous offices for each of the technical departments, such as lighting, sound and props to name three, as well as a staff room. I was also given access up onto the roof of the theatre, where the new award-winning fly tower was installed in 2016. The theatre originally had a 4-tonne weight load on their grid in 1911 and was upgraded over time to 12 tonnes. The 2016 fly tower can now take a weight load of 35 tonnes to meet the requirements of modern shows. This has been vital in the stage's wings with sets and props being suspended when not in use. The proscenium arch is 9 metres tall and the total stage depth is 9.6 metres. The current capacity is 1,416 split over three levels. The stalls can accommodate 640 people. 
There are a number of removable seats in the stalls that can be removed to accommodate up to 13 wheelchairs. The seats in the auditorium will soon be replaced, as the majority date back to the 1950s and 60s when EMI owned the building and were originally purposed as cinema seats. Some new chairs have already been added and further down the line there are plans to create a new rake for the stall's audience to improve sight lines. Make sure to look up at the impressive 128 low energy bulb chandelier which used to have an equally as impressive painted mural. This is also considered the best example of one of the two theatre roofs that open in the UK, which originally provided ventilation for the then audience capacity of 2,500. The Royal Circle houses 400 audience members. Boxes can also be hired out for performances. The Grand Circle houses 263 audience members and where you can hire theatre binoculars. There are 200 stage lights. The sound desk is located at the back of the stalls, with the lighting control at the back of the Royal Circle. Whilst there have been major improvements in light automation and tracking, the follow spots at the back of the Grand Circle are operated manually. They're powered separately from the lighting rig, with the operators able to accurately follow the actors through this viewfinder. And it looks like a significant chapter about the Shaftesbury is about to be discussed on stage. In the late 1960s, the Shaftesbury played a major turning point in UK theatre history. But to understand its impact, we have to first visit a law from nearly 300 years ago. The Licensing Act of 1737, later repealed by the Theatres Act of 1843, meant that any new play being produced had to be approved by the Lord Chamberlain's office, a department of the royal household. The Lord Chamberlain had the final say on what could and couldn't be performed, with theatres being fined for performing without a licence. Theatre censorship lasted for over 200 years before being abolished and replaced by the Theatres Act of 1968, which came into force on the 26th of September of that year. The very next day, on Friday the 27th of September, a brand new musical opened at the Shaftesbury, which was unlike anything seen before. The American rock musical hair, with its strong language, adult and sexual references, and full frontal nudity, was hugely controversial, and for some, scandalous. Despite its mixed reviews, the show had a successful run, surpassing Broadway's production for just shy of 2,000 performances. The show came to an end in 1973, when part of the theatre ceiling collapsed, the ceiling was restored and in recent years the regulation governing historic ceilings has led to annual safety inspections. In 1973, however, many suspected the ceiling collapse to be a malicious act because the Greater London Council had presented plans to redevelop the West End in favour of wider roads and office blocks. The Shaftesbury and 16 other theatres were under threat of demolition. For context, in a 25-year period between 1950 and 1975, 35 theatres were demolished in Greater London. Passionate protests by leading entertainers of the day ensued, and it resulted in what would be the 2000th performance of Hair happening right here, in the streets in front of the theatre. This promenade performance, along with the Save London's Theatres campaign, resulted in the Shaftesbury being saved, being restored and gaining listed status in 1974. It would also eventually lead to the formation of the Theatres Trust in 1976, whose duty is to protect all UK theatre buildings. One could therefore argue that theatre preservation in the UK is thanks in part to hair. Now, all this exploring and history has made me rather thirsty, so what better way to enjoy a cup of coffee than by visiting Bob, Box Office Brew, Shaftesbury's very own coffee house. Cheers. Oh, that's good. Bob provides plenty of food and drink options with no extra charge for alternative milks. There's indoor seating and outdoor seating where you can admire the award-winning Prince's Circus. Also, keep an eye out for the posters of past productions on the staircases at the theatre. And that brings us to the end of our tour.
I hope you've enjoyed your tour today of the Shaftesbury Theatre. If you're ever in London or the West End, make sure you come on down, see a show and support your local theatre. My huge thanks to everyone at the Shaftesbury Theatre for showing me around today. If you've enjoyed this episode, please like and subscribe as we get to explore more theatres around the UK. And my next question to you is, which theatre should I visit next? Let me know in the comments below. I'm David Burkhart and I'll see you on the next stage.